In today's video, I'm not actually going to tell you to buy Bitcoin. You're like, what? Let me explain. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, whenever you are. Thank you for watching my videos. I'm here joined with Mr. M uh, from Mr. M's podcast. Mr. M, Maurizio, how are you doing today? Hey, Da Vinci, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. I'm doing great. Thank you very much. Good to hear it. Good to hear it, man. You know, I am five by five. And yeah, you know what? People out there, a lot of people don't have Bitcoin. They follow me. They watch me every day. I have no Bitcoin. Like all my staff had no Bitcoin. And I'm like, what? That's going it's on. so confusing. It's so hard. I don't know how to buy it. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Is what their excuse is. Okay. All right. Today, you're going to take one tiny step to getting some Bitcoin. I'm not asking you to buy Bitcoin today. Yes. Take one step. Just one step. Not, not, I'm not saying use any of your money. Don't, don't spend a penny. Right? Not a penny today. Right? Today, you're going to take one action and one action only. What is that? It's is open it up an account. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Exactly. You can handle that. You could open up an account, right? Can't you, uh, Maurizio? Yeah, exactly. There is one of my favorite quotes, which is, uh, if you want to cut down a tree, you should spend half of the time in sharpening the blade. So, right. So this is the time where, like you said, you don't have to, you don't have to jump into anything by just have a look, do a light search, open up an account and be ready. That's all. You know, it's, it's a fantastic That's idea. Hmm? That's it. And so. This allows you to eliminate all the complexities and fears that you have, right? That, well, I just don't know how to do this. I don't know how to, to buy. I don't know. Don't concern yourself with buying right now, right? We'll show you in another episode how to buy, right? But for now, we just want you to open up an account. That's it. Nothing more. Don't, 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 uh, don't try to run or run around and buy, hit the buy button when it's really difficult. Yes, you could say there are some difficult points, but, um, but at the end, right, once you go through the process once, it's pretty easy. And you were like, okay, well, why was I so afraid of that? Right? Yeah, exactly. And, and typically the, the first step is always the most difficult, right? So you might want to mm -hmm. get away with it and just, like you said, do some research, open up an account, make sure the exchange is legit. And then let it, let it be, you know, and then come back whenever you feel ready, you then have everything already sorted. Otherwise, if you try to do everything at once, you will be stressed and, you know, it's not going to work out. Yeah. And actually, you know what? All you have to have right now, I don't even want you to do like the KYC because that's just to know your customer loss where they have to provide ID. Just open up, use your email because I think you have an email account, right? And, and and create the account. That's it. Don't get your ID together. Don't do that. We could do that in another episode, right? So with that said, um, what are some exchanges that we suggest you open up an account with? You can open up an account with one or all of the exchanges that we are about to show you in today's video. So uh, why don't you bring up some exchanges that people can actually open up an account on? Exactly. So like you said earlier, I think the best thing you can do is type in your own language into Google and see what comes out. Because for example, where we are now in the UAE, if I type in, in English, where do I buy Bitcoin in Dubai? I'll have a different search. I suppose someone in Spain or Italy or Germany or South America. So the best you can do is open Google, type into it where to buy Bitcoin and see what happens. Because we're going to give you some of the names we have used and be careful because make sure that those that you want to use or register into are going to be legit. So you might want to make sure because you never know what comes up into Google, right? So make sure that whatever you're looking doesn't have the, uh, the advertisement as supposed to, I mean, some are going to advertise, I suppose, but I like to double check the URL most of the time because there is a lot of, uh, Gray areas, let's say in Google, do you agree? Da Vinci it's always better. Yes. To yes. So be careful when you do choose your exchange through Google. Uh, but yeah, I, I, on this particular search, right, you can see the Buddha shows up and Buddha is one of the exchanges, uh, in Chile that I use. Um, this is, this gives you instant transactions to, um, buying and selling Bitcoin that same day. Amazing. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, so there you go. Like a, a good one. There you are. There you go. If you are in Chile or in South America, you can use this one. Yeah. Have you have you heard about this one, uh, Beat Oasis? I've actually used it. If you are in the region in the UAE, I've used it a couple of times. It is nice and fast. It's a small exchange. I think there are two or three in here in Dubai or in the UAE. I like oh, wow. this one. I like this one a lot. You can uh, you can put your credit card in there, transfers in and out money. Of course, he has fees like everybody else, but um, the customer support was quick. So a bit of a tip, what I do, as soon as I open an account, I test the customer support. I open up the chat or I say, hey, I have a problem. And usually I, I time the answer, how long it's going to take them to answer me. I, it's like a trick that I use to measure performances because I would like to pick an exchange who answers me when I need it, right? So what I do is this, and they reply in within 20 seconds. So very impressed. Very good tip to, for those people who are deciding which exchange out of the myriad of exchanges that exist, right? Is, you know, to test them, right? Especially since, you know, most of these exchanges you'll be able to use, but not all of them. Exactly. Like for instance, these guys here, Coinbase, good luck. <laughs> 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 if you have any, I mean, maybe I've been specifically unlucky, but if you have any single issue, good luck. Cause, uh, yeah, they they don't reply quite frequent, maybe because it's largest, maybe because they have a bunch of, I don't know, but I've been always unlucky. I don't know if you experienced them. It's like OpenSea, if you have an issue on Yeah, OpenSea. they weren't that bad before. In the very beginning, they were very responsive. Uh, you can call them up and stuff like that. But there was a high tax for that. You had to pay a large fees. Um, fees were out of this planet kind of big for buying and selling. Yeah, there you go. And, and then probably, like you said, competition has grown and now you have many others. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't know if you've used Kraken. I, my experience is, is neutral. I mean, I like them. Um, so they replied quite decent, you know, it's a huge exchange. I think if you are in the US, it's probably one of the best options you have. But I, I bought and sold crypto with uh, Kraken. I, I like the experience. It's nice. I, I never used I it have before. done it a long time ago, like um, Kraken. What was it? 2015, 16? I opened up a Kraken account and I was like, it was a Kraken in my butt. And I was like, what? I couldn't figure out how to buy and sell. And I'm like a professional at these exchanges. I don't know if they've changed. It's been like, it was like almost 10 years ago. So, so it's like eight years ago. So, you know, maybe things have changed a bit. Right. So, but it was difficult. I couldn't even like, I was like, how do I, how do I buy and sell on this thing? It's like, I was trying to train somebody else to do it and I couldn't do it. So yeah, I don't know. I, I, Maybe I it's bet, better now. I, I bet they up the updated a couple of things. And it feels like, you know, in 2015, 2016, it was more like a trading interface with lots of mm-hmm. different options. And I think they simplify them. I don't, I, I would like to, to have your option. Your, I would like to have your, sorry, I would like to have your opinion here. Do you actually recommend or use any crypto app? On, on the phone because I, I, I don't, I actually hate them because the phone is the, the most easy thing you can lose. And again, we are just discussing about opening an account, but eventually I think what happens, many people in my, in my surrounding, they have actually, they manage their crypto with their phone. So everything they have is in their phone. And I don't like that because, you know, the way I think it's like crypto should be as far as away as possible from my cell phone, because it's the thing you always carry with you. It's the thing you check when you are out and about, you log into Wi-Fi in airports. So I don't know if you agree with me, maybe I'm being paranoid, but I actually don't have any crypto apps on my phone at all. Nothing. Do you have an iPhone? I do. Yes. Well, iPhones are a walled garden. There are any app that tries to get in there does not have access to the other apps. So it's pretty okay. safe in that respect. Um, also, um, yeah, the memory uh, is completely blocked off so that, yeah, there's no way for, unless there's an, a hole in the, either the CPU itself, the computer chip there itself, there's no way for you, for any other application to access the memory of another application. Um, it is a completely like hammered down uh, system. So uh, it's really difficult. It's not impossible but extremely unlikely that your system can be remotely compromised um it's 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 so close to remote unlikely that it's practically you might as well call it an impossible 
Okay. Um, very few things. Th th there's been like one or two times where you can just go to a website and download a GIF and then have control of the, the iPhone. And there was only, that was only two times I can remember um, that that was, and that was fixed, of course, by Apple really quickly. So it's, I think, I think it's relatively safe. It's the safest, it's safer on a iPhone than a Android. But Android has, um, like, for example, any of the new Samsung phones have this systems in place specifically designed for crypto so that no other application, even if you do install an application in a non, uh, standard way, right, will have access to that, that crypto, um, portion, right? So, um, so the newer Samsung phones, assuming that's assuming the developer does take advantage of the, the, that feature in, in the Samsung phones, right? So, uh, that's, that's the issue there. So you have to, you have to, you have to assume that's the case in most and in major wallet softwares. Yes, but not all. And so, for example, what you might be concerned about is not just the, um, the wallet software, but the, the change software. So we should move on to different, uh, exchanges, right? Um, because we're going off a little bit of a topic here. Yep. And yeah, every exchange, most exchanges do have soft provide software for uh, uh, your phone. Just understand it's not a wallet. They'll call it a wallet, but it's not. It's not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What do you think All about right. Binance? Because Binance, they have a different system, right? They have this kind of peer-to-peer -peer where you buy Bitcoin of other people and you trade with them. I mean, they are in between, of course, but... I've never used Binance, actually, shocker. Never used them to buy and sell crypto. But um, I have. I, yeah. Alex is in. It's uh, relatively safe. So have you, have you ever experienced any, any, anything with Binance? Have you used it to buy and sell crypto? Yes, I have. And uh, I, I've used it to do the little lady strategy and so forth. It's, it is a safe um, platform to do that. A um, little bit more expensive than most, but yeah, it's still safe. Um, one of the things I want to to go over and let people know is that the difference between a, an exchange and your wallet, because even my fiance was having difficulty conceptualizing it, right? What's the difference between uh, BitPay, right? And uh, Binance, right? The Binance app. Well, BitPay is your wallet. Like, do you have a wallet on you? Like BitPay is like your wallet, the wallet that you have in your hand. So when you um when you when you take it and put it in your BitPay wallet, your crypto, it's like having cash in hand, right? It's like having a lot of cash on hand, right? And so that's the difference. So if you leave it on um, on an exchange like Binance, it's like leaving it at the bank, and if the bank goes under, you lose it all. Simple as that. Exactly. It's like, it's like a bank because they have custody of your assets, right? And whether if you have a wallet, you have a custody yourself. And there are some, I mean, I suppose it depends on what kind of company we talk about, but that's a fantastic example. So it's also good to make a distinction to understand where you're storing your crypto because it does make a difference indeed, for sure. One exactly. I use quite a, quite a lot is also Nexo. Nexo deals with euros. So if you are in Germany, Italy, Spain, or Portugal, whatever, in the European Union, if you have euros and you want to transfer in euros to then exchange into crypto, um, that seems to be working quite well. And they give you a, I think it's a six months of, uh, they have a, a trading uh, reduced basically next to nothing. So when you exchange into crypto and, take, and you basically pull them out, you don't pay much as opposed to others. I don't know if it's still six months, but um, when I used it back in the days for, for a certain amount of time, I think it was three to six months, depending on the transfer you do, you basically have fees to nothing, which is nice. It's always nice to have those. And then some of these exchanges like crypto.com, for example, they offer you a credit card, which in, in which you can use to buy uh, and, and do other, other stuff. But then like Da Vinci says, then it becomes a bank sort bank. of thing. So they have custody of your crypto and you can spend them with a credit card. I think Nexo also has one I can see here. Never mm -hmm. used it, so I don't know. I typically, my relationship with exchanges is really easy. I go in, I buy, I, I go in, I buy, and I get out <laughs> as, as fast as possible because I want to have custody, right? So I don't leave anything on, on exchanges, but 
And like I said, like you said, Da Vinci, today is not about buying or selling. Today is about approaching the market and see where you can perform or not and register. And then also this one you mentioned, right? A crypto market, I think it was called for the South American. Yes, this is another Ch Chilean based. Uh, actually, it's not just South American. It's only so it's Chilean based oh, Chilean, okay. uh, exchange where you can actually you know, buy crypto instantly in the same day. So yeah, uh, that's just one of the many exchanges, right? That could be local to you. And uh, once they're local, generally you can do uh, transfers the same day, buy the same day or sell on the same day and have the money the same day. Nice, that sounds, sounds good. And also I suppose if we are discussing about registrations, make sure that upon registering when you go to let's say binance make sure you check the domain name which is the real one check the domain and everything but also mm -hmm. if they start asking random question be be aware right so if they say oh give me your seed phrase no 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 no. like never never under any circumstances you should give away your seed phrase to anyone so mm -hmm. be careful of the registration process if they ask your email address your name okay fair uh, fair enough so be always mm -hmm. careful because we are at that point, maybe in the day where you go through whatever they ask and go, oh, yeah, of course, here's my seed phrase. No, 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 <laughs> never, never, right, Da Vinci, never share yeah. your seed phrase. Yeah. yeah, that's one thing you, you'll never share is that uh, those 12 words or 24 words that uh, back up your wallet. So don't ever do that. Yes. Yeah, so there's an example of what uh, you should do as a first step to, um, you know, getting some crypto. Just don't be afraid open up an account. You just need to provide your email address, put in a password and leave it. And you go, oh, that's easy. Then good. Uh, open up another account on another exchange if you felt that that was easy. And uh, maybe even three exchanges so that you can try each one and see which one works for you. Exactly. And and please be careful and never fell into traps. Like usually the, usually the story goes, if it's too good, it's probably fake. For example, I remember seeing back in the days things like, send your Bitcoin to this address and we'll send you double the amount. I mean, why someone would double what? what? So, and, and when you look into those wallets, you see a lot of money in it because maybe what they do is cameras, what they do, they take a video, maybe this one or any video, and they overlay something saying, oh, Da Vinci is doing a promotion. It's not Da Vinci. It's not me. We don't ask for money. We never message you first. Be careful, especially when you are about to enter the crypto space. Be vigilant and be always aware. Never give away your seed phrase. Never transfer money to anybody. None of these things because it's full of scammers out there. So you have to be careful always. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, with that said, hope you enjoyed today's episode and make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Cheers.